Introducing to you first, sailing from Chelsea, Massachusetts, by way of Savannah Grande, Puerto Rico. I'm heavy world champion. I've been fighting over uh, basically all my life. I started at the age of seven. And uh, I was blessed enough to get the opportunity to fight for the world title against the Vanda Holyfield. And things went well. And uh, here I am now, the first Latino heavyweight champion. First time ever. I started when I was seven years old. My stepfather uh, brought me over to the gym. It was my first introduction to boxing. It was kind of weird for me because I, I never really knew what boxing was. All I, all I know, he brought me over to the gym in East Boston. And it was a gym named the Power Street Gym. And it was just um, something that um, started hitting in the back, started um, in the mid, stuff like that. And, you know, I, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it ever since. You know, I just um, love to fight. And uh, like I said, I was on. Um, lucky enough to, to make a living out of it because not too many people make a living out, uh, out of boxing, you know, it's less than less than 1% actually make a living out of boxing. And the thing I hated the most is the running in the morning, you know, you know I used to get up early in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, as, especially at that age, you know, getting up, running at least um, probably 8 miles out there, 8 miles, 8 to 9 miles, and coming back home, taking a shower, get ready, get ready for go to school, and from school, Go after school, go to the gym, from the gym, go go home and uh, do my homework and then go to bed. That was my life you know, when I was a kid. The uh, the training wise for, for to become a, a boxing, I mean, everybody's different. My my training was to basically get up in the morning, do my running, and then in the afternoon do some um, weight training, and then at nighttime do my uh, boxing work. And that was uh, very, uh, that was mostly every day. You know, Sundays we did a little, used to a little more running. And uh, that was it for the day, for Sunday. And um, you know, it's something that um, it worked well for me. You know, I, a lot of people out there do the same thing. I mean, they manage to dedicate their lives, and you have to dedicate your life into training because if you want to move forward in this in this career, you have to be in top shape. Well, you know, back then, like I guess I was very young, very young, and. Uh, all I wanted to do, you know, with the spare time I did have, I didn't want to spend it in boxing, boxing, because I was so, you know, it was so, from morning to night, it was all boxing. You know, my thing was like more cartoons. I mean, I used to um, would like to walk, uh, wake up in the morning, do some cartoon, watch cartoons, something like that, you know, on Saturday mornings. And, you know, I did all I can to, to try to get away from boxing, because, uh, you know, from Monday, Monday through, 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 um, Monday through Sunday, it was all about boxing, running, and so on. I mean, I did some road races, I, I did some marathons, and I won a couple. That was another part of my childhood that I did enjoy because I, every Sunday, we did a different marathon, saw different cities, and it was a great experience for me. I mean, seeing a kid from Chelsea, you know, getting out of the neighborhood to see uh, other cities and, and, and experience that, and experiencing that. I used to go to Lynn, there used to be a, I'm not sure if it was a hotel or a club, they used to do shows every Saturday. I used to go there, you know, they used to, um, it used to be my amateur career and, you know, did some fights. And then, um, from there on, I uh, moved on to the, I moved on more national, you know, I made the national pals, which is a great experience for me. I got a chance to go to Sweden from winning that. And then from there, I went to the Golden Gloves, I, became, I came, I came in second place in the National Golden Gloves. You know, that, that, for that I got an invitation to, to do the, um, the um, Olympic Festival. And from the Olympic Festival I got gold on that one, which is great. I still have it at the house. I have it all framed up, which is a, a major tournament. Become number one in the country. And then uh, I invitation the from there. I went to Australia to do the um, World Championships. And I uh, came in, um, I got ranked number six in the world. Definitely always a different step. I mean, you get from, from headgear to no headgear. You know what I mean, you, you tend to um, feel the punches a little bit more. And uh, from there, you know what I mean, it was always a nerve wracking situation for me in my first fight. And it was just something that, um, that you, it seemed like you had to get through it. I mean, you have to get through it, you have to just go out there and you just 
uh, fight all you can and and do what you can, do all you can do. You know what I mean, just to uh, go out there and get a win because in boxing, you know, one loss will set you back to the beginning. Toughest fight I I fought a lot of uh, great champions, ex champions, and I fought a lot of great fighters out there. And uh, the toughest fight for me was uh, Vander Holyfield. You know, he, he he actually uh, came. He always comes to fight first of all. And uh, you know he does what he can. He does what whatever he can do to win a fight. I mean, he's a, he's a headbutt, he's an elbow. You know, for that reason alone, I am, I admire that because he, he's taking it upon himself to get that win and do whatever he can. And uh, I think that that was the first one of my first time I got my nose broken. So you know, he definitely uh, coming with a good shot and. Uh, it's just something that I was uh, will always remember those fights with him because he, not only that he's he's a legend basically. Well, the first uh, second fight with Holyfield was uh, was something that I could never put words to. It was a it was a um, it was a fight where where we just you know at one point during that fight I was at I I tell myself I gotta keep going I gotta keep going because um, yeah, like I say he's a tough guy to fight. And um, all those rounds, I was like, I gotta keep, throw, I gotta keep throwing punches. I gotta keep throwing punches because if I don't, they're gonna take this fight away, take this fight away from me. You know, they did the first one, and I felt like I needed to basically do more the second time around to get this, to get this win. You know, and to um, come in in the eleventh round and actually um, put him down the canvas was something that I, could, I never expected. It surprised me more than anybody else. I mean, uh, to see him on the on the canvas and and that's something that um you know being the not only being the second being the second person to knock the man the field down to, to the canvas. And and after all that, after the twelve round fight, having a decision come around and you know my first thought was like, oh once again, yeah I mean I'm not gonna get this, you know what I mean? He's the name, he's the one people coming to see, you know, I'm I'm the nobody here. And uh, and to for them to say the first Ever Latino heavyweight champion of the, of the world was something that I was being um, goosebumps to me. I mean, it's something that I, I will always, always remember, and um, it's just something that um, I can, you know, everybody may ask me how did I felt that day, but I can never put it to words. After winning the um, the, the championship, I mean, it was a, uh, it was going um, going to Puerto Rico was a was a, an experience itself. I mean, it seemed. Yeah, I, I might have seen the whole island come up and support me. I mean, something that I, a drive that I usually take from, from uh, San Juan to, to San Juan Grande, where I have my family who lives at, I, it takes at least, the most would be two hours. You know, I usually take an hour and a half. But the thing is that to, to have it go for 10, 10 hours from one place to the other, with everybody on the road saying hi and, 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 and congratulating me was something that I, I, I even I was surprised to see. I mean, I was raised, I was raised here in in Boston, Massachusetts. I mean, where where I was born and raised. I spent a few years in Puerto Rico with, with my um, when I was very young, and just to go back and see that the support and, and, and the um, and the love they had for me, it was uh, it was something that that I was always carried. Going to Vegas, winning the title, winning the title back home was an experience itself. I mean, it's something that one thing you, you hate to do is to, um, take a long flight and come back with a loss. I mean, and that was a, you know, it's, a, it's always a great play when you come back with a win. And that was a, that was the whole thing. I mean, with me, I mean, I'm, I was happy to come back and, and, and bring back that what people always thought I could actually accomplish. Well, the the mental part of the boxing is just, you, you have to go and fight somebody you never met, and you, at the same time you have to um, get, create some anger towards them. And it's and it's kind of weird. I mean, it's like uh, you know, at least when you meet somebody and they rub you the wrong way, they say, "Oh, he rubbed me the wrong way," and you get into a fight. You know, with these guys, it's more of a of a you know, you do more doing a handshake or whatever you do before the fight, and basically then create your mindset to go out there and fight this guy and try to. Another way to destroy him before he destroys you, and it's uh, something that um, is very, it's very hard. I mean, um, it, for myself, used to, you know, that fight with Amanda the second time around, I used to get him telling myself, you know, I gotta get through every round, 
and throw a ton of punches, it's something that you always got to be thinking about because that's what win fights. You know, I mean, the more punches you throw, the better chance you got to win the fight. So, you know, just to go through those fights and just think, of, think about it. And all through that time, it's the same time trying to defend yourself with the other person throwing punches at you too. And, you know, you, you got your, your hands full of it. My hand injury didn't quite affect too much on me. I just, um, I, I uh, you know, every time you, um, especially for boxing, you, you hurt your hands, it's very, um, uh, it becomes very difficult to, to train and, and, and so on. And for myself, my hand injury, thank goodness, we had a great doctor that managed to um, uh, repair the tendon. And basically, I'll be able to, you know, sometimes you can't even close your hand when you get after that surgery. I managed to, you know, you did a great job. I like, close my hand, make a fist, and, you know, that alone, it, it took me, uh, gave me a little bit more of a, of a rest time for myself and, and basically figure out what my next move will be. And, this, and it was, uh, I was actually blessed enough to keep, be able to keep fighting.